So we're at the feed store buying chicken feed and what did we find? Potatoes. Is that ready to can those? Yep. He's not going to really can them. But if we put them in the basement where it's cool, it's kind of like cold storage down there. So they'll last for a good long time in a cool, dark basement. And then we won't have to go buy any for a while. We're going to call this day three and a half of the house being blown up and the flooring getting done. But it's getting there. It looks really good on here. As I said, we're giving up cooking. Uh, so in today's video, you're also going to watch me come up with a crock pot meal because I feel like if the kids have to eat leftovers or McDonald's, they're, they're going to re revolt, so. But it's coming along. We've got this run done. This was a little bit difficult because there's concrete underneath there. So I had to glue that part in. I still need to probably do a little spacer back in the back there. But now that we've got this run and it's mostly straight, I mean, this is a 1917 portion of the house. So everything is a little crooked here and there. And honestly, the addition, by the time I got that framed out, you know, we, had, we were making the new part match the old part. <laughs> Weird to see. Yeah, you know, like the the walls got a little warped because it took us a long time to like get the roof on. I was like, it's fine because if the walls were straight over there, then it make it look weird over here. It's all got to combine. <laughs> but today we're going to be going around the island trying to get this big main portion done. Uh, then we'll move everything out of these two cupboards, move that over here. And once we're done with most of the cuts, we'll move these couches and the table and the bar stools into the garage that way we can oil wax it to match the rest of the flooring because you can see here this is what the white oil wax looks like two years later it's a little dirty because well, i white think oil wax and a little dirt but it's like it's really smooth it's all dusty because i've been cutting and working in here but anyway so this is what this looks like we might actually trim this out that's not been trimmed in two years since we moved in uh, I, mean, I feel like that's a lofty goal. You know, we might as well do it while we're doing trim. Oh, look, our daddy's going to school. But you can see the difference between the two. Our little college no girl. teaching today? No, I have school. I can't teach. Can't teach and do school. No, not enough time in today. <laughs> All right. to the island here I just cut up underneath this leg like I did in the kitchen under the counter and we're gonna just put this back in I'm just marking where I need to cut you can see I've got that little sliver of a piece alongside the island there and that's gonna get cut out with the jigsaw So while I'm over here putting floors in, look at Jamie, she's peeking her little head over the table. She's going through one of our two craft closet buffets. I don't know what even what it's to call these. It's too heavy to move with all of this stuff. So I'm cleaning it out, boxing it up. So that way when we do move it out, it's easier to move out. And when we put it back, it'll be organized. Yeah, so we got to move that soon. This bench has got to go. That little, uh, what is that, a dough table? <laughs> I already found a duplicate stamp. I probably should like do a de-stash and get rid of some of this stuff, but we'll see. We'll see how far I get. I'm just doing this while you're putting floor in. Yep. We have this big hutch over here that we stripped a while back on the channel. It was like a dark, dark stain before. It still needs a door repair, but got to empty it out as well. It's the same story. It's all paint and stuff. And then Jamie has her grandma's china set up here. So I was just plowing away on this and forgot to film it, but wanted to show you, I 
accidentally markered that. That's not what I wanted to show you, but made the transition around. And this is where you can run into problems where, you know, maybe this isn't exactly square on the tape on the floor or, you know, you got a little wiggle over here. The wall's not quite straight on the back end. And so you're off over here. But my transition around the island, same gap here as here. And super happy about that. We're straight all the way down. It takes some more figuring than you think. Sometimes in a room, when you're doing a room this big, I've had it be off like a whole inch. And you get to that point and you're like, oh no, what am I going to do now? Uh, but got this done. It looks good. I'm really happy with that. That was like my biggest concern in this whole room. Everything else should just go right on in. Another thing on this floor I was real concerned about is we have all antique doors in this house. Uh, this was original door on here. Jamie insisted we keep it, which I'm glad she did. It's fun. It needs a new paint job here where the dogs get up here and scratch it, but that's easy. You can see there's little nose prints on there, but this did not have to be trimmed. I didn't have to pull this door off. I do need to get a new oak trim piece here and seal the door in. But for now, this is gonna be fine. I don't have the transition piece there that goes underneath for like the door jam, but that'll be okay. This back door over here, I am going to have to, look, you can see the dogs chew my little foam. This, this house is not quite even uh, and stuff blows in all the time because uh, the dogs chew the foam on the back door when they want in. But this door is going to have to be trimmed just a little bit right there. Over here it actually clears. So that's going to be tricky because the house in this back corner where the pantry is, uh, it, it slopes down a little. It was already leveled and had done quite a bit of sagging before we ever got the home. You can see the gap there. <laughs> that door is actually not cut straight. The gap is not quite that bad, but that's how we got it. These old antique doors, when they, the house starts settling, people trim the doors up. Uh, and I've had to do the same here in this house. So, you know, it's, I don't think it's continuing to settle. I just think that, uh, you know, I went in there before we uh, finished the home and did some some shoring up of the foundation that was required by our structural engineer. So hopefully we're not still sinking on this corner because that'll end up being real bad one day. And I don't have to go the whole way because right there we're underneath. Okay, let's see if we can make that straight. All right, got a lot of daylight now that I cut that. Let's see if, before I put all the screws back in, if that clears the whole way. Ooh, it gets tight right there. Uh, old buildings. I love them. <laughs> I need to take just a hair off of that so that this door will open all the way. It's back here, we're, we're tight. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a lot. It's really high right there. I went and trimmed off more, probably more than I wanted to, but this board now slides the whole way, so I know the whole door will open. Among the mess, I'm starting to wrap up this side. Hopefully we get pretty far this evening. It's Friday evening. Uh, Jamie is coming through, and because this is uh, seconds, oak seconds, or utility oak is what they call it if you're shopping around for it, there are some imperfections. It's the wood that didn't make the grade. And so we've got to fill some holes. She's doing that with the wood putty. Every now and then there'll be a loose piece of wood and she'll just put some glue in there and then do wood putty. We'll let that dry. Then we're gonna sand it. And you know, if we have any other imperfections as we're sanding, like we got some kerf marks here and a little divot there. Step's been doing a lot of noise. I can't hear myself. Um, <laughs> If it's not perfect, it's okay. You just don't want like splinters. And you also don't want like holes for food and crap to get stuck in. So I'm just fixing all that. This is a long process, not quite as long as installing the flooring, but it's, uh, it's tedious. So you just kind of keep working at it and then 
you actually, when I'm done, I feel like I like to go back and, oh, I missed this and that. You think you wouldn't miss anything, but there's just like knot holes and everything all over the place. It's six o'clock. We have to start setting up for our live stream hour and a half. in an hour and a half. And our kitchen is blown up. We have the fridge. We have everything that like absolutely needs to be refrigerated in the fridge. A lot of the stuff is like frozen. I mean, it's only been out for like 20 minutes. Zeb put the flooring in. He's going to hook up my ice maker. Hopefully it works. It actually has not worked um, the entire time that we've had this freezer because he didn't check it last time. So it was on. I don't know. It might not still, it still might not work because yeah. when I unplugged it just now, everything was on. Oh, there, maybe there's something. I don't know. I it, think it was that weird check valve line that like pressurizes up to help reduce it from blowing up if you're out of town and your water line breaks. I don't know. Uh, whatever. Anyway, so we're... This one's got no tech in it. Low tech. We're hooking up the freezer. We're going to get everything put back in. And we'll see how it goes. But at least the flooring in is under. And no, we are not finishing the flooring that's going underneath the freezer because I don't care. We'll finish it up to the edge. But just to give you an idea of slow go, like we got in about seven rows today. There's been lots of cutting and dealing with this situation. And that's been most of our day. I mean, I didn't work on it all day. Most of our day. It, it just takes a long time. We did sell a cow today, too. Buttercup has been purchased. Do you want to tell them about who purchased her? Oh, yeah, she's a real nice gal from uh, Nevada, actually. Uh, and she has tons of goats. This is going to be her first dairy cow, but she seemed very knowledgeable. Checked her out, lifted her hooves, been around animals a lot. She should be getting a really good home. She probably knows more than we did when we yeah, got started. Yeah, she's been milking goats a long time from what I understand. Yeah, so we're going to have buy our cup for a few more weeks because they've got to get a, a trailer or something to come get her. So the yeah. buttercup is officially sold. So that's the end of an era for us. Zeb is checking to see if things are functioning as expected. See, look, it's got the perfect little thing. It even comes with a scoop that we haven't lost yet, surprisingly enough. And it has a second tray, so like if this one is full, you just swap them and then you have extra ice for events. All right, they are on. They are put back together. Comment below if you would like to see a video where we reface these. Because we bought them from the dented and ding section. They came with these dents. It saved us $4,000. Yeah, you heard that right. It was $4,000 cheaper to have the dents. So we really need to reface them. <laughs> what, what, but what, with copper I don't know. Like, can we afford copper? <laughs> I mean, the copper would probably cost as much as the fridges did. I don't think it's going to cost $4,000. I don't know. Comment below. Let us know what you think if that would be a fun Jamie and Zeb video. Or maybe we do it on Jamie Ray Vintage. What do you think? I think, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, that's why there's dents because it saved us $4,000. But they're super functional. So and the kids are going to ding them anyway. Yeah, kids, kids break everything. <laughs> and we just need space. All right. The truck is hooked up to the trailer and I didn't feel like bringing it and I've got I got four bales of hay in the back that's about what I'm gonna need to get buttercup fed until she's gone I got my trusty sidekick hay getter here I was here because you said you want to look at shoes and you can't look at boots by yourself <laughs> you have to have someone to give you an opinion yeah I uh so I did go look at boots you know it's uh it's my birthday today I was like you know what I feel like a new pair of boots but everything I tried on my foot is so wide I wear like a so size 13, like, I don't even know, 4E or something like that Zeb on the width. Zeb is so picky, and he's not a 14E. He just has white feet. <laughs> I didn't say 14, 4. I, I said 4, oh, I don't know. He has a 13 wide, but they didn't have anything. So I got Zeb to Cal Ranch because it's his actual birthday. So sometimes it's kind of nice to get a present on your birthday. Is it a present? This feels like more like a work tool. It, we're going to classify it as a present because it's all you're getting because you don't really like to buy things. Man, I wish they had a wide fit on these. These are medium. Well, we probably can order them online if you want a little bit wider now that you know the style, if you like them. Those are car hearts. Is they're leather, so are they going to stretch out and yeah, they're probably if I get a wide? They're probably good. They don't look like they're not wide enough. I mean, my foot is out all the way to the end on those. Mm. Can I run in them? Can you run? Can you chase children through the mud in them? I got a heel, so I could use them with uh, stirrups. With stirrups? Oh, for your for, for your horse. horse? I, gotta get. The, I told the girls. You told the girls you get them a horse. I told them if they helped me fence the forty, I'd get them a horse. <laughs> oh my gosh! They're never gonna help me fence that. That's true. <laughs> Zeb also likes these ones, but they have still toes. Yeah. 
So I'm also like, these ones, they have soft toe. Do they have a wide? Oh, actually, are these the same as those? Um, Yeah, they're just lighter. Are these those are soft, soft toe? I actually like these. I also like the grip on these. Well, they have a 13 right there. I just want to see a 13 wide, but you can try and see if they fit. Zeb so put these on and said, oh, so they must be comfy. <laughs> they're comfier than those by a lot. Those are nice enough looking if you oil them. You can wear them when we go to England oh, yeah. and they'll be weather weatherproof because those ones were not weatherproof. No, <laughs> these are just dragon and shoes. It's wet in England. <laughs> so they're like for dealing with animals and being out on the property and for buying junk in England. Well, I oil all my leather, so that'll waterproof them some too. They're cute. All right, I may not be much of a country girl, but I am good at shopping. And we asked if they price matched at Cal Ranch, and they do. So Zeb got his shoes 15% off. Um, they're still about 160 bucks, but they're nice shoes. And Zeb only buys like three pairs of shoes a year at most. So it was a good value. Uh, good what value. I, what I do is I buy a pair of shoes. I wear that as a nice pair. And then my old pair gets rotated into work shoes. And then when those wear out, you know, I just keep flipping. It's usually like one and a half pairs of shoes a year. That's why he thinks that I have too many pairs of shoes because I own 12. I actually do now own 13 because I bought one new pair of boots this year. But I also, because I have so many, they last me longer. So it's the same seats. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thrift haul is still on the table. We're going to have to move that soon. The boys have decided they want to give it a go. Hit it hard. Okay, move down. Right here? Yep, because when you hit it hard, it also locks it in real good too. You want to hit it so hard that you break that tongue on the wood. Ooh. Okay, got it. Oh. Now, see what you did here, though? This was kind of, you want to overlap farther, like, by about that much. Ooh, that's so really that's, cool. like, super close. It's okay. We can, that'll be all right. Just next time, get a longer board to fit in that section there. Because that's going to be tough. Yeah. Boom. You got that, Jack? That it's me. No, Redrick, it's me. Oh, him. You can get shoes on. None of you do. Redrick. Hey, hey, hey. Don't beat that tongue up with the back. All right, it's time to nail it in, Jack. No, you can keep really. whacking it like that, and it's not going to yeah, stay yeah. still until you put some nails in it. This, this isn't even, Dad. This board isn't even. That's all right. Redrick's going to run into the table here. He's going to try to nail it and hit that table. So just like hit it like this? Mm-hmm. Nope, you can't go halfway. Oh, no. Those staples are so hard to get out. Look well, at, at least that. go that far in. Well, we'll see. You should have adjusted like that right there instead of going directly on the table. I'll move the table in a second. Oh, you That's almost it. did it That's again. It. That's like into the All right, maybe take a break. Let's move Let that table. Try. Let me try. You, know, you do some construction work without shoes on, huh? That's right. The only thing you can smash is your toe with a hammer. All right, let's see if you can hit it hard. Wait, so this is the board. That's the board. Hey, that's a good hit. Put two nails in that one. All right, I'm going to go eat some dinner and go to bed. You just keep going, okay? Okay. Finish all this. Let's go. It's so funny. <laughs> is that one the right length? Does it overlap good but doesn't go all the way to the end? Nope. All right, I'm going to go get some boxes and clear this table off. So Eliza decided that she wanted in on it. Jack's going to pick her out some boards. Make sure they're in decent shape. If they've got broken ends, we don't do that. Yeah, Dad, that's this, fine. That's perfect. Wait, this has a broken end though. That's okay. Some of it's their, their utility oaks so, or seconds. So some of them are a little busted. But the deal is Eliza's going to do this for a little while. And I'm going to make her a loaded baked potato, which I feel like is fine. Because I'm also going to make myself one. All right, just be careful. Hey, hey. Careful not to hit that, see? Now I got to put putty in there. Uh, okay. Use the rubber side. But you need to nail it in because you're going to have to keep... Bro, this is like... Yeah, it's going to keep moving. Put a nail in it. 
All right, let's go. Now do the middle and it'll work its way down in onto the tongue. Just make sure you're giving it a good whack. Okay, you guys keep going. I'll start cooking. And when you get to the end, I'll do the cuts. Boards. I'll go get some. Is that getting tight, Eliza? Yeah, because it was loose on the, it would like loosen up on each side, so I just pushed it. Eliza, Hit it hard. Be careful. Hit it real hard on that one. There you go. Can I? All right, so was it worth it? I, I delivered on the potatoes. How do you feel about how swinging that hammer? Well. What did it do to your fingers? Made them all swollen. I had to take off all my rings. Yeah, that's hard work, huh? Yep. <laughs> hey, but you guys got like two rows in while I made a potato. I'll take it. All right, we are coming up to it. The last little piece of the puzzle. It's going to be super stubborn. So in the middle of the mess, the floor is actually pretty close to being done. We've got to sand it, seal it, let it sit overnight, and then we'll be ready to go. Jamie's got her noise canceling headphones on and she is making pie crusts for Thanksgiving. And yes, she's using Crisco. Not super healthy, but if you got to die of something, it might as well be flaky pies. <laughs> Don't look. It's... Last year I did all butter, and maybe I need some better recipes, but they weren't good. And maybe it's because this is like a high-protein flour, so we'll see. If they turn out bad again, then I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to practice. Um, but yeah, and I used the recipe that is on my this is, this very is the old recipe Tupperware right here. mat. Old school Tupperware recipe. Actually, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to put a little bit less... Gonna take a little out. Flour, only because sometimes that helps with combine. We'll see that. Well, I'll film again once she's uh, got it all combined. There's the recipe. <laughs> all right, I gotta put my headset on so that way you can keep working on the floors. Yep. So I am I am done with all the main room where we had enough left over, which was what we were waiting for, because the pantry floor was fine, um, except for, well, however, it must have had a gap somewhere. A lot of grossness got underneath the trim. Uh, the, the joys of having a 106-year-old uh, home. But we've got enough, so I'm going into the pantry here. i got to still move the freeze dryer around the corner there, and then we'll be cruising. On the Jamie Ray Vintage channel, I don't know that we've addressed it here, but over on the other channel, we've talked about it in live stream several times about wanting a new oven. This one's great. It does neat things. It's a little on the small side for us, but... These were baked on the exact same rack on the top oven. This one came out really good. This one's a little crispy. Even the tippy tops, like, I mean, maybe that wasn't rolled evenly, but I'm pretty sure it was, but like, yeah, it makes me crazy. Zeb is on the last strip. So he didn't want to show you guys the dirt, but Oh, it's, I already showed him most of the dirt. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> this is the waste from cutting all the ends off and making things fit around all the island and doors and all that stuff. I just left my saw down here on the floor. I have a couple of work tables over in the barn, but currently they are drying out basil. Uh, but I'm gonna get this cleaned up so that we can move the couches in here and then we'll start sanding the floors. It is Thanksgiving morning. We've got the couches covered up. You're getting me like browsing my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Doom scroll. Uh, I've got about two and a half hours here to try to sand these floors before we go to dinner. Uh, and, you know, instead of kicking around, I'm going to go ahead and sand these. It's always the anticipation before the meal. Jamie cooked some pies last night, so we'll go ahead and get those eaten up this evening after dinner. But if I can get these floors sanded tonight, once everybody goes to bed, I can seal them with the white oil wax 
let them sit overnight. That should give them pretty good cure and then light use for a couple days and we'll be good to go. Fun little story about this sander. We were doing the floors in the addition and had to go get a sander. They didn't have one for rent, but they had this used one for sale. And we have used it so much on all our wood floors here and at the shop. So we're probably going to have to come through and hand sand some of these smaller divots, but this is doing a good job at knocking like anything loose or splinters off. And I could put a heavier grit and this would just run right through this oak, but Right now I've just run an 80 grit. We're gonna kind of do like a medium sand and then we'll do a finish sand with the hand sander. Thanksgiving dinner happened and now we are back home having some of these cream pies that Jamie made. Odilia's great in chocolate and Jamie is spreading some toasted coconut on hers. So just, just fair warning, I had cheated on my diet and these are delicious. I had several bites, well worth it. Or not several bites, several slices. All right, it is currently about 11.50 on Thanksgiving night. We have about 10 minutes left to Thanksgiving. But the floors are sanded. I've taped off everywhere. I don't want to have to mess with having to do oil wax where I want paint later. It, it does cure up hard, but it takes like 30 days and we're going to repaint all this trim once we get it back in. The door jam I've got to address. I've got to kind of finish trimming that out. Um, I will get that done. It's, the original is actually not in there straight, but... I gotta fix that, I'll trim that out later and finish that off. But I'm gonna start oil waxing. It'll probably take me about an hour, hour and a half. It's gonna be a late night. Then it can sit here, it can be done. Everybody's gonna be gone most of the day tomorrow, running around, hitting up all the Black Friday deals. So we're gonna do some white oil wax on the floor now. I'm gonna put it on, wipe it back, and then it'll be done. All right, so we're kind of just winging it tonight. This is my uh, broom handle that I'm using for an extender for this. It didn't quite screw on there, so I've got it taped on. That's going to work fine. Also, I did not have a painter's tray here. I guess I have everything over at the barn, and this time of night I'm too lazy to run over there and get it. So we're going to use this uh, sheet pan lined with tin foil to put the oil wax in. This is the white oil wax that we have in the rest of the house on all the floors and it is hardened up really well. This is a product that we carry at jamierayvintage.com and it's used for furniture, used over milk paint, used on flooring. It's awesome stuff, we love it. Everyone else has gone to bed and I didn't have anyone to help me pack these out into the garage. I didn't want them to leave little spots on the floor where I went around things, so you know, I built this island to be able to be like a workbench and here we are, a couple couches on the island. All right, get you a little close up here. You can kind of see how it's beating up from the roller. On the oil wax, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it sit on the floor for about 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna take these lint-free rags and just start working in a corner and I'm gonna wipe it in, rub any excess off, and then let that cure overnight. And we should be good to do light use on it after that. It takes about a day. And then we can start moving furniture back in and just be careful on it. Probably just wear socks for a few days in here. It'll be ready to go. And you can see the difference. This is just raw red oak here. And then you can see the oil wax on there. Let's see if I can get you a 
side by side. My makeshift rollers ended up working out pretty good. Definitely not worth the trip over to the shop to get my big fancy extender. When you're wiping back oil wax, be careful with the rags because this can spontaneously combust. So you need to make sure that you're taking care of your rag properly. Either store it in a metal can with a metal lid, or I like to also just dump them in a bucket of water and, and that way they won't accidentally combust. All right, so you can really start to see the difference now. Flat, sheen, and you can see where it's been buffed. You can see it's picking up reflection over there and it's not even cured up yet. It's still, still absorbing down into the wood. Reasons I gotta get that floor done today. Winter is here and I gotta get that garage cleaned out so we're not stuck doing this all winter long. So the floors are dry. We're starting to work. I should have filmed it beforehand, but maybe you can kind of see. Can you see the crisscross? I'm touching this up. I sanded it, but it's MDF, so it kind of got swollen. Jack literally cut a tic-tac-toe in my windowsill, and you can even see the X's like two years ago. And so I'm finally, I like lightly sanded. Now I'm painting it, but I think... He was seven, and <laughs> and I, and then I did that. If you give a mouse a cookie, now I'm repainting all the window sills. Zeb was laughing at me for repainting this window seal because this window seal is the one that Cody lays in, so it's always filthy because he's like dusty and dirty. Like a cat. He is like a cat, but the window sills are really deep, and so they get dirty, and I have to paint them like once a year because even after you clean them, they just get gouges. Because what do people do in my window seals? What do people do in my window seals, Zip? They set their awesome tools so that they're not on the floor. <laughs> Zip's getting the trim back up. Um, and that window seal over there is actually by where I take all my photos. So I put the thrift haul there every week and you wouldn't think so, but that scuffs it up um, pretty good. So it's fine, I just repaint it every year. And uh, maybe someday I will have painted that one enough that you won't be able to see Jack's tic-tac-toe. So baseboards are going in. We have, I think these are seven and a half inch baseboards. Um, they're actually, I love them, super thick. Because we raised the floor, Zeb's gonna have to cut this little um, corner piece here to fit the baseboard in. I did most of the trim in the house. And so the millwork is not very expertly done. So they'll actually probably be better now with Zeb putting them in than when I did them. Huh, Zeb? You did great. I did good enough. My dad helped me do all the window seals, so they're not too bad, but the rest of the house is, um, it's, you know, it's not great. My goal ultimately though, like in the future, is to put um, stacked molding. So I wanna do kind of a coved curve molding on top of this to make them more like 10 inches thick. But that's like in a couple of years when I budgeted for it, I'll sell some stuff and then I'll buy all the trim. This is, <laughs> This is what happens when Jamie does stuff. Do you see that down there? That's um, caulking or putty or something because I cut out this uh, electrical outlet because I installed 99.9% .9 of all of the shiplap in the entire house. It was like 4,000 pieces. It was a lot. I'm not, I'm not great at it. Zeb's coming around the corner to get these baseboards in. The Christmas tree goes right there. So as soon as he gets this piece and this piece in, then we can assemble the Christmas tree. Oh, and I'm gonna paint around that outlet. So one of my fuel tools, I, I pretty much have like a whole set of everything I would ever need to build a house uh, that's battery operated now, which I love, but I don't have a battery operating oscillating. So it's on the list, but it hasn't gone on sale, so I don't have one. Hmm. Well, maybe for Christmas. I mean, I feel like this one works. It's from Harbor Freight. Yeah, that and a grinder. I need an angle grinder. One Got of, it. One of the two. <laughs> You'll need it when you're building my cottage on the 40. There you go. And we're like right there on this. Okay, so I had a little gap on the bottom of the floor. This wall was not straight. Well, you can see the wall goes back. Yeah. Nothing is straight over here. So what I did was I pulled the bottom out 
and then this is flexible enough. I'm gonna push it towards the wall. Oh, didn't stick. Why is is it, are you out of nails? No. Oh. But it's not nailing. Oh, that's Oh, why. they got stuck. But yeah, so you're just gonna angle it. That's very smart. Hold on. I would have never thought to do that. Hold I would have put a shim it. and caulked it. Touch the wall. Well, nothing is happening out here, so we're good. There we go. Now it's in, and I will bring my other board in here. Are you we'll not going to put a one nail in the middle? Yeah, I'll put some in the middle. All right, the trim. This is the corner that's getting the Christmas tree, so first corner to get done. Okay, I'm like, I, you can do the rest whenever. I, <laughs> I was supposed to have this Christmas tree up November 1st, and it's November 25th. Just a little bit later than the normal. Just a little behind. Yeah. The problem is when I start painting, I'm like, oh, I could touch up here and touch up there. And... Just, just focus on the task because <laughs> you could touch up all day in here. Although maybe reach up high and get where the clock rubs on the wall. Oh, that's probably a Zeb job. Probably not my best idea to just rip everything out of the kitchen, the family room and dining room right before Thanksgiving, thinking I could get this project done in a whole week. Uh, it took two today's the actual day or week two today and we still have some things we need to move back in but most of it's put back together the floors look great the oil wax I love it it's already drying up and curing still has a little bit of a smell when you wake up in the morning and you're not used to it but they look good they'll finish curing over the next 30 days and then just start getting that age-worn look as we live on them Make sure you guys are subscribing to our main channel because we're going to be decorating for Christmas this week. We're only about three weeks late on that, but you know what? Life happens. If you wait for the perfect time to do your projects, then your projects are never going to happen. So sometimes you just have to rip it off like a band-aid and get things done. All right, guys, make sure you're staying tuned because next week... We're gonna go do that shopping for the food storage we promised you guys we would do and get ready for the winter. Winter's already here. It's already snowed and we gotta get that done because Jamie's not going outside anymore. We'll see you on the next episode. Okay, so I'm standing in the mud room. This is the most heavily used part of the house, like this little transition right here. Now you can see how it kind of grayed out and aged with us walking on it. And this is the brand new flooring. Used to look like this flooring. Now this is new. So in probably a year or two, it'll match pretty closely and you won't even really notice those filled knot holes or anything. I still have some trim and we got to paint and do some touch up in here still. Got, you know, always a work in progress. But for the most part, these are looking awesome and you can see the gray on them the white oil wax really toned back that red. Something I was a little worried about is we have this old cabinet hutch that we keep in here and we just stripped it down and left the wood at the uh, kind of raw and lighter. And I feel like it still pairs really well with the wood floors. It matches nicely.